So I think, first of all, it's uh, late in the afternoon, so please stand up. Please stand up, all of you. And then take two steps to that side. And try to not, not to trip over, and, and go back again and sit down. <coughs> Thank you for that. Uh, so my name is Michael Matson, uh, and this is Peter Glass. And we're here to talk about physiological requirements of elite handball uh, and, and modern pipe measurements. So just heads up, uh, I'm from the data-driven side of things. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to the future where we don't say we can only measure one thing because it's too complex to measure everything. Uh, I would like to do everything and then let the data speak. So that's the main, main thing. Uh, and we're invited to uh, thank you so much for, to the European Handball Federation and the organization for inviting us uh, to present a, a, a specific research project. Uh, and and uh, to be frank, we don't have any results whatsoever yet, uh, but this is a conference every other year, so, so we'll give uh, a tidbit of, of information about the results as well, uh, but mainly an understanding of what could be uh, done with the data uh, moving forward. Um, so this is a collaborative research project between the Swedish uh, Handball Federation, the Swedish Sport Federation, uh, GIH, the Swedish School of Sport and Health Sciences, where I'm the, the uh, head researcher for this project, and also the European Handball Federation. Uh, and and um, since it's uh, data-driven and, and technology-driven, also the Swedish Floorball F Federation uh, is included in this, and, and the results could be applied for pretty much any sport indoors, team sport indoors. Uh, and, and the very vague purpose is to quantify handball. So what really matters if you want to win games? And what matters if you compare uh, youth players to junior players to lower level to international level? What's the differences? Uh, and this has been done in, in uh, soccer for many years, maybe 10 years or so. Uh, but not yet in handball, I would say, to uh, any, any sufficient degree at least. Uh, so we're analyzing the national teams, uh, senior teams in the under 21, and also national uh, league teams, men and women, and also trying to compare youth and, and senior and men and women in every uh, aspect. Um, so to put this in perspective, what we're talking about is a combination or an individualization of the player situation. In order to do that, you need to know the player's profile, uh, the player's load for any given situation, and also the recovery strategy. Uh, if you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle, you can't really make an assessment with any good accuracy at all. Um, so for example, profile data would be, be height and weight and, and I work in, at Stanford with, with genetic profiling, so the genetic profile and the strength profile, and we saw all the test results from, from different athletes here. Uh, and also load data. Uh, looking at the national team, if you have the same national team over the Olympic Games or the World Championship, for example, some players will be very tired just because they have a high load, and some players didn't play at all last game. They have a completely different profile. And then you shouldn't train them the same thing same, same level uh, rest of the competition. Uh, and this is obviously not easy to do. Uh, and it can't take any personal, uh, in, in order for it to be, be scaled to a larger scale, it can't need to be 11 people in the medical team uh, for every given team, right? Uh, so if you can do it on a, a computer database simulation instead, uh, you have a much higher possibility of getting it actually done. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, load data. In order to get load data, how hard was it for the player, you need to be able to measure it. And because you can't really just measure, for example, distance, because 100 meters run in a slow speed is not the same thing as 100 meters ran in a fast speed. It's not the same thing running straight 100 meters compared to running with a lot of changes of direction. It's not the same thing running by yourself compared to running and being hit by your opponents. 
Uh, and nothing is done in this area as of today in Hampton. Uh, so you could have distance, for example, and you could have heart rate maybe, um, but no one really knows what's the, the uh, key performance indicator. Uh, and the obvious goal would be to decrease six number of six days and decrease risk of injury and also optimize readiness for performance. And I'm gonna hand uh, this over to, to Peter now to talk about the data we're presenting today. Thanks, so um, what we, we've been doing is that we've been running a project for almost a year now with uh, trying to, to do some uh, play tracking with technology. Um, and as you might know, this has been available for outdoor sports like rugby and football for a long time. But we do have some limitations but, uh, because apparently uh, until beach handball, we had a roof on uh, our playing field. So in handball and, and rugby, uh, football and rugby, they've been able to use the GPS or GNSS uh, networks. Uh, so you might have seen uh, football players wearing a vest with a small sensor in it to be able to track how much they are running, how fast they are running and sprints and accelerations and so on. So we had some limitations, uh, but uh, quite recently, so to say, in technology words, uh, there has been some progress in technology. So going from GPS technology outdoor using the satellites up in the air to a local positioning system, which means that you need to create your own room or space within the handball or indoor uh, arena to be able to track the players. Uh, so basically the results we're getting is similar to what you see using a GPS system for outdoor. But the limitation we have is that we need to define the playing field so the system understand where the player are um, and how, how they are moving. So we're using a technology called Kinexon. Um, so as you might see, uh, nope. But anyway, we're having an antenna and then we, uh, that is a Wi-Fi antenna and then we are installing multiple antennas around the playing field basically looking at the black arrows. So what are we doing is that we are installing 12 antennas uh, looking at the uh, playing field. And what we need to do is that we need to define the position of each antenna. So from a uh, X position, which is the sideline, Y position, which is the uh, extended goal line, and Z, which is the height of the antenna. So by doing that, we are able to actually track the position of the player down to a error um, of centimeters compared to GPS for outdoor that has an error of meters. So we are very uh, close or we are at the uh, right position of the playing field. So for example, when we're using this kind of technology, when we are walking around or when we see the players are playing, if they, they are standing on their, uh, the seven meter line, we can see in our technology that they actually are. So it's very, very accurate system. But what you need to do is, that, like we said again, we need to define the playing field. We need to uh, define the position of each antenna. Also that the sensor that the player are wearing need always to be in contact with three antennas. So we need to figure out how do we install the antennas? Uh, how do we cover corners for the, uh, the wing players? Uh, how do we cover the, the backside of the goal? So the goalkeeper and the defenders are always covered by the system. But basically the setup would be like the black arrows, uh, three behind each goal uh, and three on each side. The technology we're getting out or the, the statistics that we can get out is uh, ran meters or distance traveled, distance covered during the game, uh, distance covered in different speed zones, seconds in different speed zones, time on playing field, um, the amount of acceleration, decelerations, uh, sprints, jumps, um, impacts when your two players are cl clashing together, and also other external factors as heart rate, so we can do some kind of uh, a fatigue um, analysis. So the technology itself, we need to install, like I said, the antennas, we need to define the playing field. Once that is done, which basically takes between one and two hours, depending on how many people you are. Um, then the players, of course, need to have some kind of equipment on themselves. 
So they are having a shirt, as you see in the, the down right corner, and then we are um, applying a small sensor to the players. So this sensor is what the players are using. It's, it's uh, around 15 grams, uh, so it will not affect your jump height or your sprint speed. And uh, then we also equip the players with a heart rate pulse, uh, which is additional. And the time for installation of the whole uh, squad is, I would say, below five minutes. So once the players are coming out for, um, for a warm-up, we just uh, um, apply the uh, sensor to the vest. And the general feedback we got from players is that once they start to play it, first, of course, when they're using it for the first time, they feel it because they're not used to it. But once they start to play the game, they are not affected by it and don't even feel the, the vest itself. And this is the, uh, from, from one of the, uh, the women's tournaments that, that we did measure. Uh, up to now, or to the uh, 31st of, of December this year, we are roughly been measuring 60 games. Uh, with most of the time both teams. But here you can see the, uh, the view of the, the real-time view of the software. So what we can do with the real-time view of the software is of course see all the physiological data as how much they're traveling, how much uh, high intensity work they're doing, but also trying to do some kind of a, um, let's say, analysis of the game with um, uh, how they are performing in different minutes, or like zero to 10, 10 to 20 minutes, and first and second half, for example. And uh, obviously, they can use this could be used by uh, media coverage as well um, in the future. Uh, and just to show you, um, this is a slide of, so we get individual data, a lot of, a lot of data. Uh, we could say we've talked about total distance, distance in different uh, speed zones, uh, seconds in different speed zone, acceleration, acceleration, heart rate during that game. Uh, so we get lots of data. Uh, it's actually 80,000 lines in an Excel sheet uh, per team, per half, uh, per game. So a lot of data. And again, I said we're going to show you a little, little bit of, of uh, analysis. So this, this is a, uh, the same team that won one game and lost one game. Uh, and you could see that basically the physiological markers on a team-based level, it's no different really. So as long as you are in, in good enough, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we could go to comparison between men and women, for example. First of all, we could see that uh, total distance traveled over the plane, uh, playing field doesn't differ between, this is just an example, uh, be aware. Uh, men have a higher, higher uh, amounts of, of a high speed uh, distance. Also higher percent a distance at higher speed. Uh, we could compare in the future or now between players. So this is a, a fast break and a right wing. So for example, again, they do the exact or similar amount of meters. Uh, they do similar amount of meters at slow pace, but it's a huge difference in the higher speeds uh, between the, the right wing. And this could, of course, uh, influence the training for the different players. Uh, you could also see different players at different level uh, might mean to be able to qualify, so to speak, for different uh, positions. Uh, we heard about rules so in the future, the rules, um, regulations might be, be uh, uh, improved. Uh, already to now, we can measure a lot of things with uh, soft uh, sensors. So plastic bands with, with uh, heart rates and, and uh, even glucose and lactate. So um, some of the stuff with that we need to do for the, let's say, with the preliminary results, first of all, uh, we had to make the system handball aware. So the system needs to understand what handball is. But also, uh, locomotion data seems to be coherent with earlier research. Uh, and uh, coming down to the meaning of it, there seems to be no difference in distance traveled, amount of high intensity work, or specific actions between win and lose. 
uh, might be only that it would come down to that it's technical uh, and tactical aspects and simply the best players win. So to understand the game, it's crucial for training load. Use existing data that is available for research, uh, but keep in mind that that is average and that we need to prepare the players for the worst case scenario, uh, not the average scenario. And collecting data is not a problem. And thank you for your attention.